All right, so we're checking out the Eoshin Wizard V3 in this video. So third generation Eoshin Wizard, I've obviously probably one of the most popular, most sold five inch um, freestyle drones in the FPV hobby. Um, not exactly sure why that is. It's obviously not the best in quality, but it's fairly competitive in terms of price. I mean, now everything's kind of expensive. Even the cheap stuff like, you know, from Eoshin is kind of expensive now. It is about 200 bucks for this model here, uh, plug and play, no receiver. You know, so other sort of like, you know, other higher end uh, models from like iFlight or HGLRC, they're gonna run you around a 300 to 350 for the analog version. Some may or may not come with receivers. Obviously prices will vary. I think this one's, the with the, with the Wizard V3 is like 192 right now. Of course, uh, by the time you see this video, maybe the price may have changed. Um, a lot of changes in this new uh, version three, I think for the better. And we'll kind of go over that. Obviously I still have the V2 sitting around here. Uh, let me just show you really quickly. This is what the V2 looks like. We got that nice purple color scheme. And I'll just cover what is different on the V3 versus the V2. So I'll link the V2 video in the description if you want to check it out. I'm not going to cover that in detail, I'm just going to cover all the differences. So uh, obviously pretty bare bones here as a budget um, setup or a budget build. Not a lot of components come with the builds. It obviously comes pre-built, of course. You get the GoPro mount. This is for a Hero 6, which is what I flew it with. Um, you get the uh, eight of these Racer Star um, three-bladed props. Um, you get like a little connector here for an S Plus receiver, like an XM Plus, which I didn't use because I used a Express LRS receiver. And let's see what else came here. It's a battery strap. I, I used one of the two battery straps. Um, I think that's it. So a few extra spare screws. Pretty bare bones. Not a whole lot came with it. I did peel off these little stickers here off the ESCs. You can see here they're, they're, they've been peeled off. This is what they look like in case you're wondering while well, I saw them in the, in the product photos. Where are they? They are already kind of peeling off anyway, so they're going to probably like get grass or dirt on them. So just peel them off because they're, they're just there for uh, aesthetics and cosmetic looks, not really for fu any functionality because the ECs are wrapped in heat shrink. But you can see here, Beal Heli S up to 35 amps, and I believe this goes to the 6S, 40 amps uh, peak current. So a lot of you are like, wow, that's really low. I didn't experience any issues with that. Um, obviously you don't have a lot of headroom, so do be aware of that. They did move up to a bigger motor now. So instead of the 2207, 2550 KV in the V2, you have a 2207.5, 2550 KV, same KV. Obviously these, uh, these racer star props are a little bit different than that. Um, the bearings in these are pretty smooth compared to the V2s. I didn't, uh, hear any sort of grinding or anything like that. So we'll see how they how long they last. Obviously we got a updated frame here. Um, a little bit better in terms of like the design. You got a sandwich plate here, standard stuff here, two millimeter sandwich plates, five millimeter arms, they're a bit skinnier now. And you got these uh, skinnier ESCs compared to the V2. Obviously uh, everything's kind of modernized now. Uh, we've got this sort of slammed top deck here. 20 millimeter standoffs, so not a lot of space in here for your components. So what they did is they, you know, obviously you had your ESCs on the arms, but now you have a PDB flight controller combo. So a single board there with a USB-C port. Uh, by the way, there is a wiring diagram that is not on the product page, but there, if, if you go to the product page, there's a link to the manual, which is a PDF file. And in the PDF file, there is a wiring diagram for this flight controller. So it's probably something you want to download if you happen to get this and save it in case later on this product gets discontinued so you can remember how they wired this up. But yeah, you have that, uh, it's an F405. It's got like six UARTs. Um, it's got a plug for DJI if you want to upgrade this to DJI later, but it's not included. And uh, I just soldered on my Express LRS receiver to the pads over here. I think there's three UARTs available here on these pads. I just use one of those uh, for the Express LRS receiver, which is right there. And I have the antenna kind of sticking out of that little space here in the bottom. So pretty good reception there. Uh, single uh, bottom plate there goes all the way across. 
You can see it's very uh, low profile setup there. That it's good for CG, you know, for those of you that are really aware of the CG and how you're flying, um, especially if you do a lot of flippy floppies. That battery being a little bit lower helps, in, especially when it's closer to the prop line. Um, the camera now is a Runcam Phoenix 2 instead of the Fox here that came in the V2. And the video transmitter, I believe it's, uh, it's a generic one. It's like uh, 25 to 600 milliwatts. I think it's the same range as the V2, so still analog. Now we have an antenna that's in the back here, an MMCX antenna. It's not sticking out as much as on the V2, so maybe that's gonna be a little better for durability, but it's kind of flopping around here. You may want to secure that with something. LEDs and a buzzer here in the back. So as I mentioned, yeah, the ESCs are 35 amps. They are BL Heli S. They are running just standard BL Heli S firmware, no RPM filter on here. Uh, actually, no special tuning whatsoever. Just uh, I think it's uh, BA Flight 431. Everything is like stock PID, stock filters. And um, this uh, flight control does come with the BMI 270 gyro. It does come with the BMI 280 um, barometer, which is kind of useless. Um, I don't really use that for anything. Uh, but yeah, as I, with everything, all the components these days, everything is not updated to the new BMI 270 gyro. And with just default PIDs, it seemed to fly pretty good on the setup that I had. Uh, I flew it with this new uh, GMB 1300 4S. And I'll have a video on all these new GMB batteries I've been getting. These are like this new generation, um, these uh, thir um, high volt. They're kind of like all high volt now but they're lighter and smaller. So we'll get into that a little bit later here, but this overall setup here is a lot lighter. So I got a Hero 6 here as well. Uh, they're saying this is a 348 grams, which is about 60 grams lighter than the V2. So that's another, you know, with all the component changes here, making the frame a little bit more smaller and lighter. Um, even though we got bigger motors, and the ECs are smaller, the frame smaller, and you know, all the components are smaller, so you save a lot of weight even though, the bigger, even though you have bigger motors here. So with the added um, power from the motors and it being lightweight, it just, this feels, I would say in my estimation, 25, 30% more um, uh, in terms of performance, like in terms of power and uh, authority in the air. This is my rough estimation based on just the weight, and just the weight alone really makes a big difference in terms of how it feels in the air, even without any special tuning, with just basic beta flight uh, 431 and, and default PIDs. All right, so this is how much it weighs. It's uh, 356 grams, so obviously with the GoPro mount on there, they probably didn't count that. And I'll put the GoPro, let's put the battery on first. So with the 1304S, we're coming in at 488 grams. And then with the uh, Hero 6, now we're coming in at 604 grams. So for a five inch freestyle drone with the GoPro, uh, 600 grams is on the light side. They, these days, like the heavier builds are pushing, you know, 750 to 800 grams typically. So, you know, you know based on the flight footage you can see here, uh, overall pretty decent. Uh, you know, comparable to a lot of, you know, probably more expensive options out there. Whether or not this is going to be uh, more durable in the long run, hard to say. It is lighter, but it has it does have skinnier arms, like their arms are thinner. So it's going to have better um, drag cap uh, properties in terms of flying through the air. But then, you know, it's most likely the arms are going to be breaking here. I'm sure they'll have um, spare parts and stuff later. They always have those after the, the uh, model comes out. Usually about a, about three weeks to a month, the spare parts will be out. So I know they get that question, hey, I want to get spare parts. They usually don't come out with those right away. They usually come out a little bit later. So they will come out. So I think the arms are going to probably be the ones to break in a really bad crash. But that's probably where, where you're going to want the damage to be. And uh, if it does break, you can probably get a replacement arm. Looks like you just have to remove two screws and swap the arm out, of course, and the screws for the motor to swap that in. Um, but it is lighter, so it should be more uh, durable in terms of crashes because of the fact that it's lighter. And, and I think you want to go with a lighter setup with a smaller battery like this one here. I thought it flew pretty good on this one. Although, you know, if you want more flight time, you know, um, like this one only gave me about like uh, roughly three and a half to four minutes, depending on how hard I was pushing it. And if you want to get more flight time, maybe go to like a 1500, 1550, or maybe get you another minute or so. 
but the extra weight, you know, will affect your handling. So something to keep in mind, it's always a trade-off flight time versus uh, weight. But yeah, for the price around 200 bucks for an analog pre-built drone, no receiver, not sure, you know, um, you know, like what else is out there other than the other than those really uh, dirt cheap builds from AliExpress, so the ones uh, that I've been taking a look at. The I think they're made by a company called TCMMRC, which I'm not exactly sure what the relationship is between Eshin and TCMMRC. If they're one's uh, the the parent company of the other, uh, they seem like they share a lot of the similar parts and stuff like that, even though they're branded differently. Uh, but the price of those pre-built drones, no, um, no receiver, are oh, like way cheaper than this one. So you can check out those videos. I'll have probably more of those as well. So something to keep in mind. Um, you know, uh, it, it, with all these kind of pre-built drones, you kind of get what you pay for. So if you're looking for uh, better quality, um, uh, better durability, better customer support. Those are all kind of things you're going to pay for. So as you move up in the price scale, you're going to get more of those kinds of things. So for example, you know, if you buy something from like iFlight, um, if something breaks and you don't want to repair yourself, you can send it to their uh, US uh, repair center. I think they have one in, in Europe as well. And things like that. Whereas like, you know, for something like this, those kind of options aren't going to be available to you. So those are just things you should keep in mind in terms of like, well, what is the best and it really kind of boils down to what you're willing to pay for if you want to pay for more you're going to you're going to get more for your money so if you want to pay for less you don't want to pay you know as much you're going to get less for the money so it's all you know you basically as, as i said you get what you pay for but anyway this, this is the Yishin wizard v3 i think yeah obviously third generation here they made a lot of improvements out of the three that i've flown uh, this is obviously the best one of the three I can I can tell you that much at least, um, but you know obviously they've had a few years now to uh, you know modernize the parts. They still use uh, separate ECs, of course, which is kind of outdated. But the advantage of those is you burn an EC, uh, it's easy to swap just one versus a foreign one, which will cost actually more in the long run. So again, it's debatable trade-offs, you know, etc. As with anything in the hobby. Okay, that's going to do it for this one. Links down in the video description. Got any questions? Let me know. I'll talk to you guys in the next one.